what's up everybody welcome back to the channel spiky lee farnsworth I'm coming at you one more time it feels weird to introduce yourself you know but if you've never watched i'm spiky lee farnsworth and this is the pacific northwest family channel and we just kind of film whatever we like and today we're going to do a film about the accord Some of you might be wondering, why the Honda Accord? Well, it's simple really. The Honda Accord is uh, a practical be-all, end-all kind of car, really. Um, it does uh, almost everything well, except for, I mean, off-roading, which is uh, something I don't really do. But as a daily driver, I mean, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a, a better all-rounder than the Honda Accord. So that's really why. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I like my sports cars, I like fast cars, I like uh, motorcycles, I like a lot of stuff, you know, and uh, I like a lot of impractical stuff, but it was time to get something practical. That's, I just, it just seems to fit my lifestyle now. I like the size of it, the comfort level of it. I like the looks of it. And the, basically, the goal was and still is to make this the ultimate uh, daily driver for myself. And, I, you know, I'm getting close. You know, I've added a few thousand items and uh, you know, we're, we're kind of getting close to, to what uh, I think the ultimate daily driver should be. It's a little ridiculous, but, but I like it. You know, I'm, I'm really happy with the car overall. It's been a good car for 40,000 plus, plus miles, as you'll see. Uh, and I don't really have too many complaints, but you know, the, the ones that you, you will see will probably be in a previous video uh, called Five Things I Hate or 13 or 14 I Hate about the Honda Accord that I made a while ago. So anything else, you know, I'm sure I'll mention. So today I want to talk about my experience with this car. Bought it new in 2018. It is a 2018 model, the first year of the 10th gen Honda Accord. I have 45,259 miles on it. And on my list of things to talk about, I wanted to talk about my ownership experience and then as well as what I've done to the car since owning it and how I feel about uh, really all of it. So we're gonna start with the car itself. Problems with the car. I really haven't had any. It's, it's, it's every bit as good as you would think that a Honda Accord would be. There's a reason why these cars are on the 10 best list every year. But uh, as far as problems go, I had a couple of recalls. I think one of them had to do with the fuel pump and although mine was functioning just fine it was a recall uh, from the factory nonetheless so they replaced it i believe i believe it was the fuel pump uh, and then the only other thing i've ever had to deal with was this driver's seat it kind of got squeaky over time i don't know what part or what what it was that uh was squeaking but it was something internal and 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 it would squeak like specifically the backrest portion and I had to go rounds with the dealer on that one, even though I have the factory warranty and the extended warranty up to 100,000 miles on this car. They still gave me grief about it. I had to video it. I had to bring it in. They had to verify that it was actually making the noise and you know what noise it was making, all this stuff. And dealing with dealerships is never fun. And even though you got the extended warranty, it's still not just, it's still not foolproof. You gotta, you gotta go through the motions to get stuff done. So that was a headache, I will admit. They did replace it with a new seat eventually. Um, I just had to keep bitching at them, really. Uh, that's, that's kind of the long and short of that. Uh, we'll start with the window tent. So on this car, I've got a visor. It is just above the legal limit. This is your mark right here, in case you're wondering. I forgot what they call that. Uh, but uh, I think it's a DOT that sets that. Um, anyway, just below that, I wanted it to kind of go below this uh, black, like black dot matrix they have on the windshield. Um, anyway, uh, so this is a 5% film. I wanted the visor to be uh, quite dark. I wanted to actually do its job and be a visor. So that's why I went with the 5%. Everything else is 35%. All the back windows, all the side windows, all 35%. And I did that on purpose. I wanted a really light tent. 
I consider 35% to be very light. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I like that clean look. I wanted to be able to see into the windows, not, you know, detail, but just to barely see light through the windows uh, if you're on the outside of the car. Because to me, it's just a cleaner look. Now, my plan was to go fully murdered out with this car, and uh, so I'm starting to rethink that. So as far as being murdered out, I'm starting to rethink that. I'm thinking limo tint or, and or 5% might be the way to go, although not legal, uh, technically. Um, it, it'd look a lot better, so I don't know. Double-edged sword. Uh, <laughs> got a lot of uh, uh, experience with law enforcement and, and, and dealing with them, and they're so pleasant and wonderful to deal with all the time. I, I just really like cops. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, so there's that. talk about the bags so we've had the bags on for roughly a year now and they've been pretty good you know uh, airlift makes a good product uh, they it, you know they're not bad I don't have too many complaints they've never really left me stranded that said they are not um, not without their faults uh, a lot of people have had problems with the spherical bearings on the pillow uh, pillow ball mounts up top um, and I believe that uh, that I'm starting to have that same kind of deal. Um, they're starting to make a little bit of noise. They're squeaking a little bit. And I think that that's uh, what other people have been experiencing. So I'm going to have to replace those. Of course, it's out of warranty now. So yeah, I'm going to have to come out of pocket to do that probably. They should probably fix that though. If it's a known problem and it's happened several times, they should just fix it, you know? And, and, and uh, side note, there is a little bit of clunkiness to them, and um, and I'll, if I could find the video, I'll show you because I don't have time to pull off my wheel and show you guys. But uh, they don't uh, fit like super tight, like the the uh, adjustment for the height on the strut. Okay, guys, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but it's something I've never checked, which was the the little lock collar for the height adjustment on these coilovers, these uh, air air struts from Airlift. I never checked that because from the factory, they uh, they seemed awfully tight. But I'm getting a really faint clunking noise, just a really faint noise. And I, I swear it's coming from the suspension. And I've seen other guys document this and say that that's exactly what it is. But they said it was a manufacturing flaw. So I'm going to take the wheel off today and just kind of see what's going on back there. And I'll show you what I find. So, so far on this side, it's really tight. You can try and wiggle it around and it's not clunking like that other guy's stuff was that I saw. I think it was on YouTube. I don't remember what his user tag name was. But yeah, this is pretty tight. There's It's not really moving around next i'm gonna check the collar let's see here on my wrench do this all one-handed but yeah i'm gonna stick the wrench on there and just see if i can wrench it at all and i'm pulling with all my weight here and it's not moving so i'd say that's pretty tight then so yeah i mean i guess that's good i wish i knew what that sound was self there's just a little bit of play in there and you can hear it uh when you're driving and you hit bumps it's very faint but it's just a little just a little bit and it's it's really annoying because for for the longest time and quite frankly uh, uh over a year over the warranty period uh i never figured out what it was i guess i didn't investigate too hard but i don't i don't drive this thing every day so uh but uh yeah yeah so i could i couldn't figure out what it was and then i i saw another person posted uh who has the same setup and he's like he's like yo is this happening to other people you know is this happening uh with their bags and stuff and uh yeah so that's a thing and uh so yeah so there's a little bit of clunkiness there i need to fix that or airlift needs to fix it actually i don't know how you would fix it it's just the way it's manufactured and it's not the greatest deal. Thank you. 
introduction, the camber kit install was, the rear camber kit install was a lot of fun. You'll probably see that in my video. I didn't show the full struggle, but best believe it was a struggle to get my fat hand up in that little tiny space. To That's what she said. Or he said. To do that, be sure and watch that video if you're interested, and that will explain exactly what I'm talking about. Whew, getting the bags aligned, or getting the, the suspension, the alignment done, after all that was a real chore. A lot of shops won't even touch it because you're on bags, and if they can't deal with the factory stuff, they just won't do it. I had a guy go out of his way to hate on me and not get it done. A place I won't mention, <coughs> Firestone, um, in Graham, or Puyallup. Um, off of uh, 176. Anyway, yeah, this guy went as far as to, to hate on me. Uh, he wouldn't do it, so I went back another day, and this other guy was going to do it for me, do the alignment, and uh, he went over and went out of his way to hate on me and tell that guy not to do it because he had refused me service the other day. It just I, he didn't have to go that far, but you know it is what it is. You'll find a lot of shops won't touch this stuff and it'll be a headache to uh, to get it aligned. Was it important for me to get it aligned? Yes, even though it's a bag system and it's uh, and it's and it's got adjustments and stuff and it, that'll mess with your camper constantly. I do have settings at, at different ride heights that I, I cruise at, right? So if I get it aligned at a specific ride height, then it should, you know, in theory, at least be close to being somewhat correct, you know? which was important to me because I spent a lot of money on tires and we'll get to the tires here in a bit. But um, yeah, finding an alignment shop, geez, that'll, that'll actually do the work that you want. And then some, it's, it's hard to do. But at, a, at the recommendation of a friend, VW, Volkswagen of Auburn, man, those are straight OGs over there, man. I'll tell you what, they hooked it up. They, they gave me exactly what I wanted. I told them I want that old man alignment. I, I want function over form. I don't want the, the camber angle. I'm not part of the camber gang. I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan. A couple of degrees of camber, but I like function. I like to be able to corner I, and not die. And I don't want my contact patch to be this big. So, not to mention, spent a lot of money on tires, right? I guess I just mentioned it. So yeah, so that's where I was at. And he, dude hooked it up, man. He elongated the holes uh, for the, the strut tower. He just did that for me. He already knew what I wanted. I didn't even have to tell him. Uh, I forgot his name. I want to say it was Joel, but I'm not really sure. Uh, anyway, yeah, man, they hooked it up. They didn't give me any problems. Was it expensive? Sure. I think it, I think I paid 150 bucks to get that done, but it was worth it to me to save my tires. And because uh, I'm on my winter setup right now, and uh, it was important to me to save them, you know, because I got some really nice. Uh, I got the Michelin. What is it? Michelin Cross Climate Twos. And the reason I got these is because I live in Washington and I like to take road trips and whatnot. And uh, they were supposed to be good in all weather situations, including snow with second to none performance and grip in the wet. Well, I'm kind of in the Seattle area, so I deal with the wet quite often. Now, one thing I want to mention while I'm on the subject with, uh, of the bags and the alignment and all that is it's very important to get your alignment done after you get your bags installed. It's very important to get your alignment done, period. But once you start doing some major changes like that, get it done because it's, it can be, quite frankly, it can be unsafe if you don't. Uh, not, it won't just wear out your tires. Like it could, it could, it could harm your person. And I'll explain what I mean by that. I didn't get my alignment done right away, and it was wearing out my tires faster than normal. Okay, par for the course. Problem was, I was on a road trip and I was coming back from Portland, I-5, and you know how I-5 is rutted out. You know, you got a lot of standing water when it rains, and it rains often in that stretch. Well, I had my, uh, my toe was out by quite a bit in the front right corner. I didn't know that. And it kept uh, causing me to hydroplane a bit. And it was very disconcerting. It was very bewildering. It was, it was not a good experience. It was quite scary. Get some help. And uh, I, I could have crashed. I could have I could have totaled my car because of that. I lesson learned, man. Get your alignment done. Also, the factor Goodyear's on this car are kind of garbage. They're really not that good. Most people don't like them. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that. I had a mediocre experience with them until my alignment was off. Then I had a scary experience with them. I'll say that. 
so that's that uh, the last thing I want to mention about bags is if you're going to run bags and especially if this is going to be on your ooh, yellow Lamborghini I don't know if you can see that in the video anyway <laughs> got distracted uh, Lamborghinis tend to do that uh, so uh, the, the last thing I want to touch on is if you plan on having a bagged car and it's uh, it's going to be your daily kind of or, or even close to that it's going to be something that you're going to be driving a lot and in all kind of weather and different conditions uh, just note that if it gets below freezing if you've got moisture in your lines it could freeze up your system and uh, you're not going to be able to use it really um, that happened to me I actually had to uh, pull it into a buddy's shop and uh, wait for the lines to thaw out before I could even do anything. And uh, I said this was the last thing I was gonna talk about, but it's not. One more thing about bags. Um, air contains moisture and you don't want moisture in your lines. You don't want moisture getting into your manifold. Uh, drain that, drain that shit every week. I drain it every week. Uh, I'll show you in another video sometime, uh, a little rig that I set up for mine to, to drain it maybe even in this video if i get around to it i don't know uh but yeah drain it every week man if you can drain your water traps if you've got more than one like myself um do that make sure you don't get water in your manifold and, and ruin your system because that that would suck um you don't want to do that As for tires, I think I covered this a little bit in this video already, but the reason I went with the tires is there's several factors. One, this was going to be my winter setup. I was going to keep the stocks uh, for a winter setup, and why not a winter tire? I mean, that only makes sense. Could I put a, a sexier, slimmer, like more stretchy kind of tire on there? Sure, absolutely. And I had one in mind. Um, also made by Mich Michelin. I think it was the, I think it's called the Pilot 4S or something like that. But uh, I went with these because of the tread. The tread rating is quite high, um, so it's like a harder rubber. It's going to last quite quite a while. Uh, it had the best ratings for uh, rain, uh, for you know, for wet conditions and snow. And uh, I do live in Washington, so I do experience those things from time to time. And I just wanted something to be a good all rounder, and they are really uh really a quiet tire very comfortable um, a better ride than, than than stock less noise uh way way better with uh, wet traction um as that's pretty much what they're designed for and uh yeah i don't have any regrets or so that's kind of why i chose the tires that i did initially like like for this set of wheels for the stocks they are beefier than the stock good years that came on the on the uh cord so uh, with my new camber settings, which are in there straight up and down. I don't have really any negative camber, which is how I wanted it. Um, I think I'm like at negative one degree, which to me is perfect for, for daily use in on a winter setup. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's ideal, right? So that's what I did. Um, and I don't regret it, but uh, they are beefier. Uh, so I can't get as low when I when I pancake it now. It's not as low as it used to be. You can see that in the videos as well. Um, yes, it's summer's basically here now, and I'm feeling the need for some new tires and wheels. But uh, I, don't know, I might have to wait till next year. I'm, I'm broke with a joke. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the reason for the tires that I chose. Let's just talk about it and while I'm talking about it I'm gonna insert photos of different information so you know what I'm talking about and we can go from there okay and this is the other part of the system people rarely get to see one two three four five six s tens alpine s tens you can see the pass through there all custom Got all four amps here, the PDX series, the DM810, kicking it right there. 
Underneath you've got the AH45 limitless lithium with the built-in distro blocks and the amp rack. Now you got two compressors, the 480s underneath here. I believe they're the 480s. And then your air tanks up top. Now in my stereo, I had been collecting gear over the years. I'm not rich. I really don't have this kind of money, but I used to work in the industry and I got a lot of good deals. But plus I had been accumulating this stuff over the years. I literally had new old stock that had been discontinued that had never been installed yet by the time I got this installed. Yeah, I know, dragging my feet a little bit. I could have went a lot faster with this, but I learned my lesson before from previous builds, going too hard, too fast, and I, I got myself in a little bit of hot water over that. So, you know, I won't go too much into detail, but pace yourself, make sure you can afford it. Make sure you, uh, you know, do it responsibly, whatever mods you do. And um, like me, you know, right now, it's taking me so long to, to build this car and to get it where it's at because everything I'm doing, I'm paying for. I'm making sure I have the money to pay for it or, or at least pay for it in a timely fashion if I do put it on a charge card and then I, I I would pay that off before I go on to the next project. It's kind of been my style this time. So it's taken a lot longer, but it's it gives me a lot of peace of mind knowing that I'm at least in a safe space where my finances are. <laughs> Gotta keep yourself in check, man. Uh, take, it's taken me 40 years to, to learn that. Um, did I just say that out loud? Wow. So yeah, but okay, stereo equipment. I've got uh, basically all the big three under the hood, upgraded. That's all your wires underneath the hood. Uh, Ott gauge, OFC Ott gauge. Um, for the big three under the hood, I've got a 300 amp uh, inline fuse that I'll show you. Uh, and then it runs back to an isolator. Okay, this is just an explanation really quick on um, why I feel the need for an isolator if you're going to have a two battery setup there are a couple of reasons why i did it um one with the car off it, I'm, i got quite a quite a large stereo system that draws a lot of power i didn't want it taking from the main car battery the one that runs all you know the car basically i wanted that to be separate so that's reason number one for the isolator i wanted it to just the stereo system basically run off the rear battery only and still be able to be charged from the factory alternator, which it does. Um, I don't know why I had to think about that. But yeah, uh, and it keeps everything separate. So the only power draw is from that rear battery that's in my trunk underneath the amp rack that I showed and that I'll show at some point in this video. Um, so that's one thing. But then two, if you do have a dual battery setup, they always say to have the same type of battery. So it kind of has like an even, draw I guess even for the for the for the charging system otherwise you can mess one of them up like it it, it just goes wonky if you don't have the same type of battery and these are not the same type of battery and believe me I don't have another a 45 ah under my hood no I can't afford that that's that better was a thousand bucks like it's, I don't have that kind of money to just Oh, I'll take two. Yeah. No, I mean, it was a stretch to get this one, but um, yeah, that's why. I don't, I mean, I don't want to ruin an expensive battery. Um, and uh, and I didn't want any of the classic uh, symptoms of a large system, you know, the, the dimming lights and stuff. And you don't really have that much with the LEDs that cars have nowadays, but I mean, I didn't want any of that. I wanted to keep it all separate, and it is. And so that's really the reason for an isolator. Um, and then, uh, to another battery in the back, I've got a limitless lithium AH 45, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then that goes to all my equipment. Now, as far as equipment, what I'm running, we'll just start with the speakers up front. We've got a set of components. We've got uh, Focal power series, one, six, five KRX twos. That's it, that's the model number and that's it's discontinued now i think they're just called k2 or something like that or ps165 something like that but uh these are the power uh 165 krx tubes up front and this is a full active system so that means each channel uh each speaker has its own channel 
and amplification. Uh, it's going to a DSP in the back, an audio control DM810 uh, from the factory head unit. I'm using the high outputs from the factory head unit to the high input of the DSP to uh, create the low outputs for my amplifiers. It's all crossed over, time aligned, and I've got three different tunes via my ACR3 right here. I can select those, and also this controls my sub gain, if you will, um, or output signal from the DMA10 on the sub channel. Uh, while we're on the subject, I've got an audio control uh, epicenter in dash. I've had an epicenter in every system I've ever had, and I highly recommend them. If you don't know what they are, get to know them. Um, and if you're a hater, uh, I guess just be a hater. <laughs> I find that people either, either love them or hate them, and there's no in between on that. So a lot of purists don't like the epicenter, but I love it. Uh, basically, you could take uh, something as lame as Mariah Carey and make it sound like a bass tape, which I think is cool. So, running that. Um, and then as far as uh, amplifiers, I've got four amplifiers. I've got two uh, old school Alpine PDX F6. Those are 150 watts RMS per channel uh, times four each. So eight channels there. Oh, also I should mention, I got the same component set in the rear. Uh, 165KRX2 Focals in the rear deck. Also powered by the PDX F6. Then I've got two PDM, uh, the PDM, or PDX M12s, my bad. I'm trying to think of the model number here. PDX M12, I got two of those running a bank of three uh, 10 inch subwoofers on each side. Uh, and those are Alpine Type S Series 10s. Three on each side and custom enclosures made by myself. Very proud of those, it took me way too long, but um, yeah, it's a learning curve working with fiberglass, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, got all that in there. What else was I gonna say? Um, oh, and then so I'm gonna insert some photos and video if you can't really see in the, this video. Um, clip uh, these angles that I have going on right now. The custom dash I had made uh, by a good buddy of mine, he made it for me and uh, put a little spectrum analyzer in there. I'm, I'm from the 70s, I'm a 70s kid, but basically grew up in the 80s and back then, high-end systems had spectrum analyzers. If you don't know what that is, you, you're about to see it. I'll put it right here, boom. Anyway, uh, yeah, they're just cool, man. So I had to have one in my car. Besides, I've never seen one in a car before, and it was just cool. It's a, you know, it's a Chinese part I got off of eBay. I think I got I spent like 50 bucks on it or something like that. I'll try to put a link in the description if I think about it. It's just a cool thing to have, and you can change the views, and it does different stuff. Obviously, I'm not playing any music right now because of copyright, but I will I'll figure something out for you guys, and I'll, I'll videotape it so you can kind of see it in action. It's kind of cool. Right now, you're just seeing like the white noise uh, that the deck puts out, you know, whatever that's worth. Anyway, um, what's next on the list? What are we talking about now? Stereo head unit. Oh, so one of the things about the stereo I wanted to mention is my future plans. I don't plan to run the stock deck forever. I, I feel like I've found the limitations of that deck. You know how some recordings you just know they should sound a certain way and you, you feel like you're missing out if you're not getting that full experience and that's kind of my my thoughts on this this head unit although we've done everything we can to extract the most out of it uh i feel it falls short from from my uh, snobby audiophile ear if you will it falls short of the goal where i want it to be so future plans i'm thinking about i'm considering an ipad pro and a Sony RSX GS9. And I'm thinking about tucking that in right in here. Uh, but they just, you know, iPad Pro right here, bam. And the, as far as these 
center vents go i mean i don't really use them all that much uh, in fact hardly ever so if it covers it a little bit i'm, I'm kind of cool with that but I, I don't know i'm still thinking about it i don't know but yeah speaking of dislikes one of my dislikes is the stock deck um and mainly because there's no aftermarket support there's there's nothing you can't get an i maestro i data link unit to tie into said system uh, currently they only make one for the hrv of all things really really i data link maestro really who even buys that car but anyways i digress there is no interface um that i know of that you can tie into that uh to the factory um brain you know and, and make an aftermarket deck work um, as you may know, may or may not know, a new Accord has like the tablet style in the dash. Like if you're a side view, it'd be kind of like at an angle like this. It's just a tablet kicking it there. And then the, like the main deck is like buried inside the dash. Well, the problem is, in my opinion, uh, the problem is they, they started with, uh, an Android tablet. That's, that's what that is. That's inside the, inside the, uh, the Accord. They use Android tablets to do uh, Apple things if you're trying to do Apple CarPlay. Now, the problem is when you uh, try to do Apple CarPlay, and mine's a 2018 model, so I don't have the wireless CarPlay, so I can't really comment on that. Um, maybe that works better, but... Uh, and I tried the wireless dongle thing, you know, to make mine wireless, but it doesn't it doesn't really work. Um, I've had problems with that, too, which you'll see in another video on my channel as well. But I digress. Uh, the problem is... When I plug in my phone to do the Apple CarPlay and do Apple CarPlay things, it works for a while and then the tablet freezes. And I have to actually go into the, uh, the technician uh, like diagnostics mode and, and like reboot the whole tablet. And as soon as I do that, then it starts working again every time. Now, the problem for me is I can't, I have the extended warranty. I, I'm out of the factory warranty now, but. I do have the extended warranty of 230,000 miles or something like that. Problem is those aftermarket uh, warranty companies won't cover something like that. If you do anything that is an OEM, and of course I've done a whole lot of non-OEM things. And although, um, you know, I could run all the way around the bush and probably fight them in court and win, uh, I mean, it's a lot of money out of pocket initially, uh, a lot of effort, a lot of time you know, an expense and, uh, that I don't really need right now. So I'm not, I've decided not to fight them on that. Basically, I need a, a new deck, a new tablet. And I don't even think that would solve my problem because I don't have much faith in Android devices. Call me a snob. But that's that's just how I feel. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the factory deck sucks. It freezes all the time. Um, and so uh, I have a plan for that in the future. Uh probably going to bypass the whole damn thing uh but unfortunately i have to leave that deck in there uh to be able to do all the other functionality of my car so it's kind of maddening and nobody makes anything for this car so that's also maddening um what do you do i can't believe that nobody makes anything for the honda accord i mean like that's probably one of the best-selling sedans in america uh aside from the toyota camry right like and it's, it's those it's those two so I'm really surprised that they don't make anything for it. And, and anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. And then also I had a pass through made in the rear seat for, for the base, you know, cause you, you spend a lot of money for your base. You want all the base you can, can get. So you don't want it be, to be limited and closed off in the trunk, right? So you need a vent for that. I had my buddy make a custom uh, pass through for that. I don't know if the touring model Accord has that or not. I would imagine it probably does. saw in another video if you've been watching my channel at all that I did an underglow system the funny thing is I don't ever, ever even use it like I'm so I want to steer clear of the law <laughs> okay it's not exactly legal to be running that stuff uh, I, I found that a lot of people are and it really seems like they don't care as much but back in the 90s man you get a ticket for that so fast if you were to ride through that with that stuff and I just dealing with the law as much as I do and 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 it affecting my livelihood as far as I make how I make my money like I don't 
I don't need no problems with the law or them even paying attention to me whatsoever. So I rarely ever use it. Maybe I'm an old man now. I don't know. But I do have it if I, if and when I ever do feel like the, the need to use it. It is cool. Um, yeah, I just got the, the Amazon kit that everybody gets. The one with the little phone app. I'll, again, I'll put a link in the description if I feel, you know, if I remember. Um... I did get some aftermarket tail lights. I didn't like uh, the fact that Honda didn't give you the full LED experience if you didn't get the touring model. I don't know why they thought that everybody else should be less safe if they didn't spend more money on the touring model to get a full LED brake light. And I just, I don't know. Honda did a lot of stupid stuff as far as I'm concerned. But um, yeah, that's one of the things I, I had a gripe about. I, di I didn't like really the design of the headlights. I mean, they were okay, but then the fact that they didn't light up fully and the basically the trunk portion was just for looks on lesser models, the Sport and LX and things like that. Just didn't sit right with me. I wanted something uh, that looked a little more luxurious. So I went with some of those, uh, the V2. I, I, I don't remember what company makes it, but it's, it's the V2, if I'm not mistaken, uh, of those uh, taillights. And if I think of it, I'll put a, a, a little blurb about what they are exactly and I'll show the animation but yeah they're pretty cool I like them uh, they were fairly easy install I probably should have recorded that but I didn't um, if you're fairly handy with uh, any kind of tools you, you, you can do it it's it's really not that I it's not that hard I do recommend investing in some plastic trim removal tools if you don't already have those so you're not marking up your stuff and scratching your paint uh, I did put some side marker film, I, um, what I call side marker film. It's vivid films. It's a, it's, it's a vinyl film. It's got a little hex pattern you can barely see in there. I thought it was kind of cool. And I also got like different shades of it in case I get tired of that. But I put it over the little amber piece on the headlights just to kind of darken that out. Because like I said, this is going to be murdered out eventually. And I do have uh, the trim pieces for the... Uh, uh, for the uh, trim above the windows. So that's just another thing I was going to do. Um, kind of darken that out, black that out. Oh, we got another Accord here all blacked out. He doesn't have the aftermarket lights, but you see how they, they, don't, uh, they don't light up all the way? So there you go. Um, oh, and he's got the, the window visors. Anyway, um, let's see, was that all I was going to talk about? I think that's basically it. I mean, I do still need to get wheels. I haven't decided if I'm going to get a body kit later on or not. But, uh, you know, maybe. We'll see. Um, I do need to get wheels, though. I'm not going to rock these forever. Like I said, this is kind of my winter setup. But, you know, funds are kind of tight. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, when I'm going to do that. Um, oh, the radar system. You might have heard me mention that I got the uh, Max 360Ci and uh, that it wasn't working, and that's true. I got I was lucky enough to get the uh, I was lucky enough to get the uh, the dud out of the box. Uh, it was it was a brick right out of the box, and uh, of course they're really scarce. And with, but you know it's really hard to get your hands on replacements, and so this is actually taking a couple actually two, three months to rectify it, get the parts and uh, get them installed and revisit this. So I, I haven't had a pleasant experience from day one and this is not a cheap unit. Uh, this is probably one of, I think the most expensive um, radar unit you can get pretty much for your vehicle. I, I don't know of a pricier one. I don't know of a more exotic one than this. So I wasn't happy. You can imagine how unhappy I was um, with the, the initial um, quality of the product but you know I mean things aren't uh, guaranteed you know and sometimes uh, you know, I'm sure Ferrari even makes a lemon now and then right maybe I don't know but you probably never hear of it because they'll sue you if you say anything I don't know anyway that said you know no product is perfect 
nobody's perfect. Nothing is perfect. So I didn't have a perfect experience. It was a, it's, it, it kind of sucked. But I got the new unit in and it seems to be working fine now. Um, so I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, and, and you'll see that in the video, uh, little snippets of uh, what it is, what it does. Basically, it's a, it's a full radar system. Um, it's integrated into my rear view mirror. There's a, a display for it. I also use an app on my smartphone, which I have a magnetic mount right next to my screen on the dash, where I use this, this smartphone app. And you can see updates in real time. Um, and it updates itself. It's, it's a smart radar. It uh, learns um, false uh, alarms, false, false alerts via GPS. You can update things in GPS uh, in the system yourself. Like if you see a police officer or something, you can mark that on the app while you're driving and let other drivers know. It's a really good piece of kit um, if you, uh, you want to stay away from the popo, away from the FIBO, away from those that would cost you lots of money. So you're welcome for that. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. Um, it'll let you know. It'll let you know where the fuzz is, and that's good. I want to know where that's at. Also, you'll see in, in another snippet, I've got uh, the shifters um, in the front and rear bumpers, uh, front and rear, well, rear, I guess, trunk balance or whatever. They're right underneath by the back of the camera. Anyway, those are laser shifters. So what they do is... I, if you didn't know, if you if a, if a, if a copper is uh, on the side of the road and he's zapping you with laser, uh, by the time your radar detector goes off and lets you know that you have uh, a laser alert, it's too late. He already has you. Like, there's nothing you can do, right? Except if you have the laser shifters, right? Those will send, an, basically send an air message back to him or cause his device to air out and give you a few seconds to slow down uh, where normally you wouldn't have that option. Uh, and so those are a really good thing to have and that's what I have. Uh, good for me. Uh, I, believe me, I need all the help I can get. Uh, it's it's a long story. It's, it's just a very long story. And anyway, uh, I just like to that added insurance. I'm an insur insurance kind of guy, man. I, I don't, yeah, I don't need the fuzz anywhere near me. So it's a, it's a good investment. It works good now. And uh, I, I would be inclined to, to recommend it now if you can afford it. It's, it's pretty awesome. So there's that. that that's all I'm going to say about that. Today. I did have a radar system before. I don't know if you guys saw it in previous videos. It was the Max 360 CI. Uh, or no, that's what I have now, the Max 360 CI, the top of the line. I had just the Max 360, and it was just kicking it on the rear view mirror. I do have the CI. I've had nothing but problems with it since I got it. And so I'm going to show you that in a, in a later video if I ever get it to work out. It's really cool if it works. And I'll find that out this Monday. It's Sunday now. To, so tomorrow night I'm dropping it off at the shop to see if they can actually fix it for me. <laughs> As we've been going months. For the, dude, the pandemic has done so much to just ruin everything. They ju It just... Anyway, as you know, um, but yeah, parts, you can't, you can't get your hands on stuff, you know? And so it was very hard to get a replacement. Basically what we went through all the motions to try and dial this one in and um, they determined it, it, it's just a brick. It, it's just not working right and we, we need a replacement unit. And they finally um, tracked one down. So they're gonna install that and hopefully that takes care of the problems. And then if it does, I will show you how cool it is in the future because it's, it's pretty darn cool. So that's really the last mod that I wanted to talk about that I've uh, or briefly touch on in this video because, uh, you know, it is a mod I've done and quite an, uh, a major one. So from the factory, Honda and their infinite wisdom put an eco mode button here in the manual version of the 2.0T, which doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, this should be their sportiest model, but they decided to put an eco mode button here, which I never use and I think is laughable that they even put it in there. Except for right now with gas prices, I'm kind of like, hmm, maybe I could use that. But to tell you the truth, with you, with this car in eco mode, uh, I never liked driving it. It's not a fun experience to drive it in that mode. So uh, I just, I just grin and bear it. But uh, yeah, 
without the eco mode now and I just pay the gas prices. But yeah, so instead we just use that space for something I think is much more practical, which is the control panel for the Max 360 Ci. Fully integrated, looks like it belongs there from the factory, which is very cool. Was where you would uh, see that display. And uh, that's where I get my alerts and stuff like that. So we'll just start the car so you can see. It will come up here momentarily. And there it is. So yeah, it's, you can kind of barely see it during the daytime. It's pretty sunny, but uh, yeah. And you may have noticed that the display of the Max 360 Ci is integrated into this mirror. You can kind of barely see it. It's a really hot, sunny day and very bright outside, but I mean, it's there. You can see it. Um, so yeah. That's where I had it put in. This is a backup camera mirror, and we just took the backup camera monitor out of it, and uh, it's see-through enough that you can use the display right in the mirror. The other option is to go to a company called Radar Mirror, and they actually cut a hole in the glass for you and make it so that the uh, display can be seen through. But I think the cheapest option they had was like $700. And I got the same effect here. I got this mirror off of, which is also an auto dim mirror, off of Amazon for like 130 bucks. So, you know, I, I saved myself about six, six hundred or so dollars.